Hi, my name's John Doyle. I'm the Technical Manager at CADTEC Systems. And in this series of videos, we're going to be looking at the simulation capabilities inside of SOLIDWORKS Premium. In this particular video, we're going to be concentrating on the capabilities with respect to analysing assemblies. So looking at the connections and contact between multiple components. The same would be true with multiple bodies in a part. So the example we're going to use is this uh, steering bracket assembly out of a rally car. So the loads would be exerted through the rest of the steering assembly by the driver as he's turning the car from one lock to the other. So let's take a look at that assembly now inside of SOLIDWORKS. So we'll start off by creating ourselves a new study. The materials are already defined because they've been done so in uh, SOLIDWORKS before we created our study. So the first thing we really need to do is think about how this thing's going to be restrained. Now in reality it would be bolted to the hub of the wheel. So we can represent the hub by using something called a sliding restraint. We can see from the animation exactly what that means. It's going to be allowed to slide around but not able to come away from that face. Now that's not going to be enough to restrain our assembly. Obviously if we apply a force at the moment it's just going to move. So what we need to do is to do something to represent the bolts. Now I'm going to choose to start off by doing that with something called a fixed hinge. Again we can see from the animation exactly what a fixed hinge means. It's going to be allowed to rotate but not move in any other direction. So it's a reasonable representation of a bolt. Let's do that on the three holes. And finally we need to apply our force. The force is going to act on the ball but it's not going to act to squeeze the ball, it's going to act in a specific direction which we can specify by picking a face plane, a face, an edge, and so on. And the value of that is going to be 6,000 newtons. And we're ready to run. So it's going to go ahead now and create the mesh and then run our simulation. Now I'm not overly concerned at the moment about the uh, specific values here. Um, we're just using this as an example to explore the different uh, options we can use when we're looking at the interaction between components. So let's uh, look at the displacement plot and we'll just exaggerate that so we can see exactly what's happening and create ourselves an animation. So I guess it's kind of doing what we expected but one thing that might concern us is the fact that all of the parts are moving as if they were, they were bonded together, so almost as if it was a single entity. Now the reason for that is something we skipped past earlier on, which is this setting here called uh, component contact. We can see that the global setting is that are bonded, so any faces that are initially touching and contact will maintain uh, that relationship, so they'll act as if they are bonded, welded, glued together. So we need to override that, and we do that by using something called contact sets. SOLIDWORKS makes this really easy. It will automatically identify any of the faces that are initially touching in our assembly and find those for us. And then we can either select all five of those or maybe just select some of them. And we're going to use something called a no penetration contact. So that does what it says. It's going to stop them penetrating, but it will allow them to come apart. Now this takes a little while longer to run, to, so to save you watching the uh, dialogue progress across the screen, we're going to look at a study I ran earlier and we'll look at that same exaggerated displacement plot and again we'll animate it. So we can see now that the the arms of the bracket start to splay apart and a gap appears in between the arms and the ball and also where the, uh, the pin is, if I just stop that animation and zoom in, we can see that the hole starts to stretch and the uh, a gap appears between the pin and the, uh, and the hole. So that's all looking more realistic. The only thing that might trouble us now is uh, where our part is bolted to the uh, hub of the wheel. Again, if we animate that, I guess we might expect it to want to try and peel away from the hub, and that behaviour isn't happening. The reason for that, of course, is our sliding restraint that we applied earlier on. This will hold that back face, again, maybe as if it's like a magnet almost, holding it to the hub of the wheel. So what we really want to do, again, is, is have a no penetration contact but we don't really want to have to include the hub of the wheel. So what we can do instead is to create something called a virtual wall. We do that by, uh, if I just turn on our reference planes, I've got a reference plane that's effectively going to uh, replicate the behaviour of the hub. So again, it's another type of contact set, and this is a special one called a virtual wall. We select the same face of the bracket, and 
the plane to represent the hub and of course we want to get rid of our slider or else this isn't going to do anything so we can either suppress or delete that and then again we're ready to run our next part of the simulation that took a few minutes to run on my laptop so we've speeded that up for the uh, sake of the video and if we look at our displacement result again now we can see how the bracket is starting to peel away from the hub so we're now getting a much more realistic representation of how this assembly would behave in reality the final thing that we might be interested in is the bolts themselves if we want to understand the effect of the preload that the bolt would have on the bracket or perhaps we want to know whether the forces would actually uh, try and shear the bolts then we can also include the effects of the bolts so we do that um, by adding a connector and in SOLIDWORKS it's as simple as adding something called a bolt so we just pick the, fault, the bolt, the face where we want the bolt to go and this is a special kind of bolt, you can see here we've got counterboard, countersunk and so on but we're here we're using something called a foundation bolt the reason for that is that we're bolting it to the virtual wall the others would be if we were bolting it to a different component we can then specify the material that we want the bolt to be made out of we can include strength information about the bolt if we want SOLIDWORKS to actually tell us whether the thing might fail or not and finally we can specify uh, the torque that we would tighten the bolt to we'd go ahead and do the same thing on the uh, other three holes but again to save a bit of time we've got that one already run and whilst it doesn't have uh, much of a difference on the displacement results in this example we may have additional stresses now that are created by the uh, the preload of the bolt. 